Well, who do we have here? A little girl. Just stay where you are, okay? Hey, stop! I'll get you anyway. Ah, oh, damn! Why do children keep getting away from me? I should do more sport. Just you wait. Hey, come back! Give up! You can't get away! Especially not against the current. Triumphantly, Lily climbed the ladder. She had finally found a way to get into the institution. Not so fast. Although she was briefly distracted by a floating energy smarty, Lily was able to reach the ledge. Not a moment too soon as the ladder crashed down behind her, dragging the phantom into the pit with it. No! Fortified by the energy smarty, Lily was able to pull herself up on the ledge. Now her search for Edna could continue. The lamp was glowing red. The lamp was glowing red. It was hopeless. It was hopeless. my fireplace. You shouldn't be here unless you want to bring presents or sweep the chimney. Not that the soot is bothering me. That was the old Mr. Frock. The new Mr. Frock is enjoying the dirt. Ah, dirt. You see? <laughs> That's Mr. Frock to you. And in case you're wondering what a piece of clothing like me is doing inside a fireplace, I'm acquiring soot. That's right. I used to be very fastidious about staying clean. But then this impertinent person came along and dared to spill something on me. The stains never came out. My clothing is black and greasy. My socks haven't been ironed. And I even have fleas. Karen and Bertram. I'd introduce them to you, but they're sleeping right now. Um... I'm living in a sooty chimney. So what? I used to be very fastidious about staying clean. Now, I don't care anymore. You're now speaking with the dark Mr. Frock, who eats his gummy bears without a napkin. Um... Yes, I know that it's dirty here. So what? I love the cobwebs, the dust, and that rotting substance in the corner. I just finished combing it. I wouldn't dust here even if you put a feather duster right in my hand. You'll 
don't have a feather duster, do you? Um... Stop! I don't want to know. D you don't need to mumble like that. Ever since Dr. Marcel's accident, we can make as much noise here as we want. He's no longer interested in what's going on inside the asylum. All of his attention is focused on finding Edna. Uh, Somehow you remind me of a patient we used to have here. She was a little taller than you. And I think I remember two red horns and a tail. The idea was good, but Lily's arms were too short. The idea was good, but Lily's arms were too short. The idea was good, but Lily's arms were too short. The idea was good, but Lily's arms were too short. The idea was good, but Lily's arms were too short. The idea was good, but Lily's arms were too short. The idea was good, but Lily's arms were too short. The idea was good, but Lily's arms were too short. The idea was good, but Lily's arms were too short. The idea was good, but Lily's arms were too short. The idea was good, but Lily's arms were too short. The idea was good, but Lily's arms were too short. The idea was good, but Lily's arms were too short. The idea was good, but Lily's arms were too short. The idea was good, but Lily's arms were too short. The idea was good, but Lily's arms were too short. Lily had inadvertently broken off the leg of the chair. It was as pointy as a knife. Hopefully the funny little rabbit hadn't seen anything. But Lily, what are you doing there? Don't you remember? You must not use sharp objects. Just don't touch it, okay? See you around. But Lily, what are you doing there? Don't you remember? You must not use sharp objects. Just don't touch it, okay? See you around. But Lily, what are you doing there? Don't you remember? You must not use sharp objects. Just don't touch it, okay? See you around. But Lily, what are But Lily, what are you doing there? Don't you remember? Hey, that's my fireplace. You shouldn't be here. What do you have there? A feather duster? Not that I would want to have a feather duster. Oh, no. No matter how pretty they look. Which doesn't mean that I can't hold it for a second. Just one little second. That would be completely harmless. Don't you think? Give it to me now. Ah, oh, what a relief. 
And just look, I even found my old spare sheets. Here, go ahead and take it. You, you've earned it. Thanks for finally freeing me from this burden. I only hope the chimney sweep comes soon, because I'm starting to get hungry. Moths fluttered around the dim light of the lamp. They were apparently searching for food. Um... Uh -huh. It was hopeless. The man in the bee costume couldn't hear Lily from there. The door was firmly locked. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Surprised to see me again? Yes, keep kicking. You won't escape me again. And now hold still until I've decided what to do with you. Lily considered this option but instead did the following. <laughs> Lily didn't want to appear greedy. One feather would be enough, just like a Christmas dinner at the convent. <laughs> no, stop that! <laughs> 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 no, stop that! <laughs> the pain! You dang brat! Look what you did! Don't just stand there! Do something! <laughs> Thanks. That was close. I... Uh-oh. This demon had also made a mistake. It seemed that in certain situations, it really was necessary to handle sharp objects. Lily returned victoriously to reality. Sharp objects. Ah! My eye! Damn you, you disobedient brat! Damn! Lily fought for air. The phantom's grip was tight around her throat. Disobedient, it had said. V. 
Vidi, 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 whoosh. Welcome to the laundrette. That was your cue to say, this is supposed to be a laundrette, and I'll answer, of course. Oh, admittedly, it's a little rusting, but necessity is the mother of invention. Mother knows best. And now we're doing our laundry in the urinals. Too wishy-washy for you? What other choice do we have? Exactly none. You don't have to, you know. Just make sure that the fabrics are separated properly. The toilet sanitizers really stay. We'll do the red laundry in the urinal with the red toilet sanitizer. Yellow laundry in the urinal with the yellow toilet sanitizer. Blue laundry in the urinal with the blue toilet sanitizer. And green laundry in the urinal with the green toilet sanitizer. If you want to try it, just show me some clothing with the right color. Then you can use the matching urinal as often as you want. If you want to try it, then you can use the matching urinal as often as you want. My goodness, who do we have here then? Another player! Yippee! Don't pay any attention to him! Peter just sees black all the time! He was born that way. <laughs> That's true! Peter suffers from color blindness! Struggle jug! Well said, loyal friend. We all have our crosses to bear. Oh, yeah? Do you all wake up every morning knowing that one day you'll lie dead at the foot of a traffic light? Not exactly. But Drugglejug, for instance, mixes up his blues and greens. You can't really compare the two. Your girlfriend Petra mixes up her yellows and greens. She's not my girlfriend. And we, King Adrian, mix up our reds and yellows. You should have been there when we played the board game. Sorry, Peter almost choked. I wanted to end my misery. Afterwards, we decided never to play a board game again. Only fantasy role-playing games instead. You decided that. And what did we just say? It's so exciting! We are a group of adventurers in the legendary world of Home Motigor. Oh, please, why don't you join us? Struggle Jug? Not so fast. If the fair maiden wishes to join us in battle, she must first prove herself worthy. She must complete a task that puts her heroic valor to the test. Just tell her to order a pizza already so we can get on with it. Uh um, So be it. She shall order us pizza. Um. I want broccoli on the pizza, but no tomatoes, please. Struggle jug? Oh, no broccoli. Struggle jug? Bananas aren't bad either, but I could just die for broccoli. Oh, yes. Please do. For that, I'd even happily have bananas on a pizza. You only eat blueberries anyway. Yes, I like blueberries. But in this life, you never get what you want anyway. Uh, <clears throat> Upon the order of the king, blueberries will be banned from the pizza. Instead, knowest that tomatoes will grace the pizza dough from now on. But I don't like tomatoes! Lily had heard enough. It seemed impossible to get a pizza that everyone liked. You... Struggle Jug. Yeah, you heard him. Bringest thou the pizza first? Then thou may join us in play. It's really easy. All you need are dice, pencils, paper. And don't forget to bring a tendency for humiliating yourself. Druggle jug. Um. Druggle jug. Don't drug him. You have to forgive him. He's colorblind, as we all are. Peter mixes up his reds and his greens. Adrian mixes up his reds and his yellows. Droggy mixes up his greens and his blues. And I mix up my yellows and my greens. Funny, isn't it? Um. 
you're probably wondering why Draghi has a green pillow on his head, right? Drago Jug? My goodness, she's right. What on earth are you wearing? You're embarrassing me in front of my new subject, Drago Chuck. <laughs> yes, it is a little strange. Wait until you've heard the explanation. Today should have been Blue Pillow Day. <sighs> Drago Chuck. Struggle Jug, I believe our guest is searching for the tyrant known as Dr. Marcel. Deliver her thy news. Struggle Jug, Struggle Jug, Struggle Jug, Struggle Jug. Don't forget to mention the helicopter. Struggle Jug. And was never seen again. Bravo. Well told, loyal friend. Since then, these lands have returned to the wise rule of a magnanimous king. We can do whatever we want. Does that mean I can finally sleep now? No! Hello, Lily. You're not going to play with fun? Of course you don't want that. You know that Mother Superior has forbidden it. Welcome to Spammy's Pizza Slavers. My name is Pokey. Can I take your order? Um... One Elm Asylum, is that right? I assume that we just shove it under the gate as usual. What toppings? Uh... Hello? Hello? Can I take your order? Uh... One with nothing coming up. Consider it done. It'll be about 30 to 45 minutes. Have a nice day. No, no, no. You're discoloring the laundry. This urinal is reserved for red laundry. If you've got some with you, you can use the urinal as long as you need to. But not before. A laundry room is kind of like a kitchen. It just has bigger pots. A laundry... It just... What do you have there? Let me see. Oh, very good. You obviously understand the basic principle. Go ahead and use the red urinal as much as you like. But Lily, what are you doing there? Don't you remember? You must not use sharp objects. Just don't touch it, okay? See you around. What do you have there? Let me see. Oh, very good. You obviously understand. Go ahead and use the green urinal as much as you like. That was already freshly washed. That was already fresh. <laughs> Lily finally got the chance to use a pointy object. Dr. Marcel would surely be pleased. 
With the help of his credit card, Lily made some confetti. Hello, stranger. Before you say anything, please take a deep breath. <gasps> and is that what freedom smells like? Or is it just regular air consisting of oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, soot from the asylum's new chimney, and a touch of diesel oil from the garage? <sighs> I don't want to seem melodramatic, but I'm somewhat skeptical about this so-called freedom. Ever since Dr. Marcel started neglecting his duties as head of this asylum, it's us, the patients, that carry the burden of creating our own boundaries. And before I'm able to measure up to this freedom, I do have to ask myself a few things. Maybe there are such things as good boundaries. And even in an ideal case, can I really decide where my own freedom starts and stops? It so happens that no one is preventing me from leaving the asylum. Does that mean I'm free? Can I just fly away, spread my wings, and leap from the asylum roof? The urge is there. Just like any bee, I long to buzz across fields of flowers collecting honey. But I'm still fighting it. Something about this freedom stinks. Hello, you're not of you know. Mmm, that smells good. But even if the illusion is almost perfect, it's only artificial flavors and chemical esters. An almost perfect illusion, but not real. Like with everything here in the asylum, it's only a half-hearted attempt to trick us into thinking that we're free. And now that no one is stopping us from leaving the asylum, it provides us with a welcome excuse to refuse to leave. Right you are, stranger. I'm just running away from my responsibilities. The responsibility to myself, to accept the deal that the world out there has offered me. I thank you. I've made up my mind. I can't just sit around here doing nothing anymore. I should buzz across fields of flowers and collect honey. Toodaloo, asylum. Hey-ho, freedom. Whee! Lily was glad that she had helped the bee man. Soon he would be in a better place. Moths fluttered around the dim light of the lamp. They were apparently searching for food. What do you have there? Let me see. Oh, very good. You obviously understand. Go ahead and use the yellow urinal as much as you like. That was already freshly washed. In the convent school rules, there was an extra passage stating that Lily had to maintain a minimum distance of 150 feet to the laundry room. You're probably slowly beginning to understand why. Already found the right tool. What she lacked was, once again, the ability. Had already found what she lacked. Lily decided, and yet again, what a Lily j <sighs> The door was The door was firmly locked.
Lily this and yet again Lily what a sh Lily just Something was It was even more beautiful than she had imagined. It was hopeless. Something was missing here. Lily knew that you could use starch to stiffen up laundry. It wouldn't hurt to give it a shot. Well, who said it? Now Lily had a stiff towel with holes. What are you doing here? Are you actually dead? Uh -uh. Too bad. I could use a little entertainment, but the doctor told me not to talk to other people. At least not living ones. Sorry. But I'm going to have to ask you to leave. You shouldn't be here. I'm not allowed to talk to people. At least not living ones. The narrator was slowly losing interest in coming up with motives for Lily's action. The truth of the matter was, no one knew what she was doing and why. The sheets were spotlessly white. Oh dear, Lily really had managed to ruin the sheet. But perhaps a sheet with two eye holes could be good for something. Yikes! A ghost! How sweet! Finally someone to talk to. You have to help me. Dr. Marcel is wrongfully keeping me here in the asylum. Isn't there anything that you and your ghost buddies can do about it? Curse him? Deprive him of his sleep? Drag him into the seventh circle of hell and torture him for all eternity with red-hot needles? Oh, come on. I've done so much for you. I've performed obscure rituals, sacrificed chickens, danced naked. Although when I think about it, I'm not sure if it was really a ghost that asked me to do that. Ugh. I don't feel so well. Could you please take off your head while we're talking? <gasps> oh man, you're not very talkative. Can't you help me at all? Uh-huh. Great, look at this. The doctor is forcing me to knit these stuffed rabbits. No idea what he needs them for, but I'm not very good at it. Maybe you could lend me a hand. Wait, I'll push some of the fabric through the hatch. La 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 la. La 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 I'm knitting for the doctor It will do me good I'm knitting for the doctor Nom 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 Lily had already found the right tool. What she lacked was, once again, the ability. What do you have there? Let me see. Oh, very good. You obviously understand. Go ahead and use the blue urinal as much as you like. How about that? Blue broccoli?
how about that? Green tomatoes. How about that? Red bananas. How about that? Yellow blueberries. One spermy margarita pizza, please. One spermy margarita pizza, please. Yellow blueberries. Lily knew she wasn't supposed to play with her food. Food was such a sore loser. And when it started acting up, Lily would get scared. Blue broccoli. Green tomatoes. Red bananas. Ah, the pizza! Well then! Mmm, superb, superb! Great! I wish I were as good on the phone as you! Druggle jug! And Peter is satisfied too! Satisfied? How can I be satisfied in such a world in which the only moments worth living for are those when the pizza arrives with the right toppings? That means yes! We owe you one! Peter almost it's not that bad. I've already lost all hope of dying honorably anyway. Druggle jug! Well said. Now that the food is taken care of, let us begin the game. Don't you want to play too, sweetie? You'll see. It'll be incredibly fun. If you take pleasure in such excessive self-degradation. That and a dice cup. Druggle jug! Uh-huh. So be it. Then follow us. Into the world of Hoth Mottigor. Your group has set up camp near the infamous Goblin Gorge. Lily found herself in a clearing. The campfire was crackling and the wind whipped through her clothes. You can hear the war drums of the goblins in the distance. This is your last rest. Before the great battle, Lily did in fact hear drums. An enormous army seemed to be waiting for them in the nearby mountains. Wait, are you telling the story or am I? Uh, wh what? It's just that I see that you don't have the Dungeon Master screen in front of you. And I'm pretty sure that the Dungeon Master is recognized by his Dungeon Master's screen. That's ridiculous. I'm the narrator. I don't need a... Well, then why don't you be the Dungeon Master then? I'm curious how you'll do without any battle value tables or source books. What? But, but that's... That's what I thought. And now, move over. Ow! Hey! You can't just... Where was I? Oh, yes. You're here on the orders of the king to drive the goblins from the gorge. There are rumors that the goblins have dammed up the Pink River. This has turned Hothmotagor's most important memorial into a reservoir, the Valley of Unpleasant Memories. Also sitting at the fire is a mysterious local guide. You're tired from the journey. But sleep is far from your mind. Goblin scouts could be lurking anywhere. The black magician Petrula, the noble Sir Drogalot, and the amusing juggler Snippo. I want a different role. Shush! 
are gathering their strength for the battle. Only the Amazonian barbarian warrioress Lilligrim. Huh? That's you! Only the Amazonian barbarian warrior Lilligrim is restless. It's your move, Lilligrim. What will you do? 